Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode in our WCW What If series in TW 2020. It is week 2 in January of 1997. We have Nitro here tonight. And then a couple days from now we have WCW Clash of the Champions. Where we will have every championship in WCW on the line. We'll kind of go over that card at the end of this episode. But before we get to that, we have a Nitro to get through. And after last week's uh, craziness that happened, for sure, we uh, we need to we need to get some follow up follow up on all that. We need to find out what's going on in WCW. We open up Nitro in front of 18,229 people at the Arrowhead Pond in Anaheim, California, with a promo in the ring. Roddy Piper opens up Nitro. This week in all sorts of a rage. He's absolutely pissed off right now. He yells out that he wants that little piece of shit Eric Bischoff out here right this second. Of course, Piper was not here last week to answer, or didn't really uh, provide much of an answer to Eric Bischoff's big reveal last week. That he is a part of the New World Order. Speaking of that, the New World Order's music hits. And Bischoff comes out with Ted DiBiase joining him. Piper yells at Bischoff to try to be a man and come down here alone, but Bischoff simply just says, bite me. Uh, he says he doesn't answer to Piper. In fact, now that Bischoff is back, Piper is no longer needed around here. So allow him to be the one to give Piper his walking. Piper cuts him off before he can say the last part of it and says that the WCW board of directors put him here. So only they or Ted Turner himself can get rid of him. But if this is how Bischoff wants to play, he'll play. Tonight, in the main event, his NWO boys, uh, Sean Waltman and Jerry Lynn, will defend the WCW World Tag Team Championships against the former WCW World Heavyweight Champion Randy Savage and the man who could be the future WCW World Heavyweight Champion, Cactus Jack. So big main event just days before that big world title matchup this Thursday night. As tag team titles will be on the line, it will be Jerry Lynn and Sean Waltman uh, defending the titles against Cactus Jack and Randy Savage. 78 rating for this segment. Pretty good, honestly, considering uh, Bischoff's uh, popularity and, and uh, entertainment skills are not that great. I realized, literally as I clicked this uh, segment open to start to uh, record this, however, that I forgot to put Bischoff officially in the NWO, so he still has the WCW... Uh, border for his picture, but trust me, he is a part of the New World Order, so there is that. Move on to a 100-rated segment in which the Giant has a quick backstage promo where he says that he's been playing with shackles for far too long. Last week on Nitro, the real Giant was unleashed, and now WCW itself will run in fear because the Giant's coming to destroy all. So quick little segment here. Um, 100 rated as the Giants just absolutely killing it on the microphone but yeah he's he's showing that he's a pissed off Giant at this point he's unleashing his his true self and uh, you know the last week was apparently the first time we've seen the true unleashed Giant and he went and choked slammed three people including the former WCW World Heavyweight Champion Sting so if this is what the true unleashed Giant is we all or well, at least they all in WCW might be in some trouble after that, Dustin Rhodes has a microphone. Um, he has a matchup up next, and so he gets on mic and kind of talks about his upcoming rematch for the United States Championship this Thursday at Clash of Champions against Paul Levesque. He says that he knows that he's uh, still kind of seen as the third wheel to this whole U.S. title picture storyline right now, but as the former champion, he is uh, he you know he held that championship for a couple of months. And did it justice, and he wants to get it back and uh, be the United States champion that people that the WCW universe can be proud of. So he uh, has no problem going into battle against a New World Order member and winning the championship back. Ninety-nine rating segment here. Then he has a matchup as kind of a little bit of a warm-up before that match this Thursday. And he defeats Al Snow in a 41 by pinfall with a bulldog to an 81 rating for the for the match itself. Really good stuff there. Uh, Johnny B. Bad 
came out and was watching up on the entranceway. Johnny Bad and Al Snow had a bit of a confrontation this past Saturday night, uh, or this past uh, week on WCW Saturday night. So it looks like Johnny Bad and Al Snow might be leading towards something, um, might be more of a Saturday, uh, WCW Saturday night storyline, but we'll see. But I kind of wanted to take the opportunity to get involved here as well. But Al Snow with a, sing a 61 entering performance. That's the first time he's broken a 60, so that's really cool. I will take that, but there you go. 81 rating for this matchup, and, uh, you know, Rhodes is able to get a little bit of momentum heading into the match this Thursday night. After that, Harlem Heat are being interviewed by Gene Orkelin, talking about the disappointment of being back in, quote-unquote, the line when it comes to the World Tag Team titles. Uh, since, you know, Cactus Jack and Randy Savage are getting a shot tonight and not them. Jericho interrupts and kind of laughs about these two crying over their failures and uh, laughing about the fact that he was able to defeat Stevie Ray so easily last week. Booker T steps up to Jericho and says that uh, he got lucky last week against Stevie Ray, but that Booker has no problem shutting his mouth tonight. So Jericho's like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll meet you in that ring. I'll meet you in that ring when you take on my friend Lance Storm. <laughs> so... A little bit of back and forth. It ends up leading to a match to made tonight between Booker T and Lance Storm on Nitro. 83 rating for this segment here. After that, we then get a decent matchup in which Eddie Guerrero defeats Sexton Hardcastle in 531 by submission with the Gory Special. Just kind of a quick Nitro. Um, I don't want to say squash match, because we're not completely squashing Hardcastle, but... You know, it's the, the main eventer taking on a, a, an unknown talent kind of thing. Uh, but 85 is still really good for that, honestly. Um, that's a, probably one of the better in uh, one of the better match ratings we've had in this game so or in this uh, in this save so far. And uh, it can feature these two men. <laughs> um, nothing against these two men, but still. Uh, Sex and Hardcastle with a 40. Guerrero with a 91, they have pretty good chemistry with each other, so that's a good thing for the future if uh, Hardcastle ends up being, you know, potentially growing here in WCW and Eddie Guerrero sticks around. I mean, could be, lead to some potential good matches between the two of them, but 85 rating for the segment, um, good stuff there. However, after the match, um, and after we learn about Eddie Guerrero debuting a new hope spot, apparently, uh, after the match, we are... Greeted by the by the horsemen coming out to the ring. Well, not to the ring. They come out from the back. As Eddie is celebrating, Flair gets on a mic and says that a victory over an unknown talent like that guy means nothing. However, getting a victory over a horseman, though, might be a step in the right direction of getting anywhere close to sniffing the level of Ric Flair. So he says next week, if, if Eddie Guerrero isn't too scared of the challenge, it'll be Eddie Guerrero taking on Marcus Bagwell. And Guerrero kind of nods in acceptance. So next week on Nitro, it will be Eddie Guerrero versus Marcus Bagwell. And we'll have to see how that one ends up playing out. Then we get a quick little video, um, just kind of hyped, hyping up Dean Malenko and Ming, uh, their TV title matchup this Thursday. Uh, unfortunately, kind of ran out of room on the show to have um, anything beyond just a quick video hyping up the matchup, but... You know, it still kind of goes over Ming's injury and, and him coming back and um, waiting this whole time to really uh, decide whether he wanted to challenge for the TV title or something else. Kind of goes over Dean Malenko's feud with Chris Jericho and him defending the TV title against a bunch of other people. And uh, kind of hypes up the big title match between the two of them in just 72 hours time at Clash of Champions. Then after that, and about the head subpar wrestling non-existent crowd, he, I know it's going to have rough ratings because, you know, popularity. But, you know, the only way to build them up is to feature them on big spotlights uh, segments. And in a non-title matchup, in just a couple of seconds under seven minutes, Megumi Kudo, the WCW Women's World Champion, was able to defeat Takako Inoue in 658 by pinball the Kudo driver. 43 rating for the match, 39 from Inoue, 60 from Megumi Kudo. Wow, that is a strong in-ring performance for our women, for uh, a member of our women's division right there. Like, no offense against her, I, I know she's good, that's why we, I wanted her to be the first champion, but 
that's a strong uh, performance for our uh, first women's world champion for sure. Um, you know, crowd got turned off by it, whatever. The crowd are going to be pissy about that for a little while now, I suppose. But still, that's a strong performance there from Kudo. Those bonuses right there for her. Good stuff there. Would have been probably, I'd say probably upper 40s if it, you know if Kudo had at least enough popularity to uh, to justify no longer being unimportant. But we'll get her there. We will get her there as much or as soon as we can. Afterwards, though, it is revealed that Bull Nakano is the one who who won that matchup on uh, WCW Saturday Night, which leads to Megumi Kudo having to defend the Women's World Championship against Bull Nakano this Thursday at Clash of Champions. Sonny Ono and Bull Nakano come out after the match, and Ono says that Kudo will meet her end at Clash of Champions this Thursday night. Kudo may be the first WCW Women's World Champion, but Bull Nakano will be the last, because she will, you know, the idea being that she will win the championship and then never lose it. So, kind of a, a nice little build there as it is going to be Megumi Kudo and Bull Nakano for the championship at Clash of Champions. After that, Steven Regal has a bit of a sit-down interview with Gene Oakland. He says that he's feeling a little bit sore after Starcade, has a bit of a minor affliction, but one he can work through. He beat Eddie Guerrero, though, and he wants more. He wants the money, he wants the power, he wants the prizes, you know, he wants the fame, he wants the spotlight, he wants all of it. So he'll be at Clash of Champions, and he'll make it clear at that show who he's after next. 95 rating for the segment. Very, very good promo from Steven Regal there. Um, I did run him in a match. Um, it was either a pre-show match of Nitro last week, or it was the WCW Saturday Night show. And he still had an 81 in-ring performance. So he's slightly... He's about 10 points lower than he would be working through his injury, but he's not low enough that I need to like sit him like during this whole time that he's injured. So he's going to work through it. I'm just going to obviously have to not really feature him on in matches that much. It'll probably be more of like, you know, for the next year or so, he'll have maybe your occasional match on Nitro, but um, he'll, it'll probably be mostly just um, pay-per-view matches he'll be having, so... You know, like, he'll have his, you know, he'll have, like, a pay-per-view match or at least, you know, close to a pay-per-view match uh, every month or whatever. Every time we have a pay-per-view, he'll probably have a match on the show. Um, and then, you know, every other month he'll have, like, a match on Nitro or something like that. Just something to keep him kind of, kind of uh, still working in the ring, but not enough that it's going to make the injury worse or that it's going to, you know, hamper anything too badly because of it, so... So, I mean, an 81 in-ring performance is still not bad for someone who's right there, kind of, I'd say kind of right in between the upper mid-card and the main event level um, is Steven Regal. He's he's at that point where he's, uh, you know, definitely on the, in the world title picture, but he's kind of just on the outside, like just within, you know, just on the, 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 the line, I guess, so to speak, of the world title picture. Um so we'll have to see. We'll have to see what championship he's a. Uh, well, we'll have to see who he's coming after next. Whether it's a champion, whether it's a somebody who's challenging for it, whether it's somebody else completely. I don't know, but we'll have to see who he's coming after uh, after this Thursday. Then after that, in that a four made match between Booger T and Lance Storm, Booger T gets the victory in seven eleven by pinfall the missile dropkick. Seventy one rating for the match doesn't uh, help the storyline, but to be fair, Lance Storm is is has a future of being pretty good, but at the moment he's not great right now. He's more of just Chris Jericho's friend slash lackey. Uh, Booker T gets the kind of easy victory, not easy, easy, but kind of a, a, uh, significant victory. 76 from Booker, 43 from Landstorm. And, uh, you know, now both sides seem to have a victory in one-on-one -on -one action. So obviously at some point they'll have to have that big two on two matchup to figure out, you know, to, to have the uh, the big blow-off, I guess, for the feud. After that, Diamond Dallas Page comes out and says that last week, a big old teddy bear tried to step up to him. A big old teddy bear that someone like Diamond Dallas Page is supposed to be afraid of. But Page, Page ain't afraid of anyone. So if the teddy bear wants to play rough, Vader will feel the 
before he can say that final word, he gets blindsided by Vader, who attacks him from behind. Paige tries to fight him off, but the, Vader, the advantage that Vader just got with that blind attack is too much to come back from. Eventually leads to Vader powerbombing Paige in the middle of the ring before standing over his body with a smile on his face. Percy Pringle gets in the ring with a microphone and says, Feel that bang before the two of them leave the ring together. 85 rating for the segment. Very good stuff there. Helps out with the storyline as clearly the uh, bit of a stare down between Paige and Vader last week is not the end of things. As Paige called out Vader and Vader attacked him and left him laid out in the ring. So we'll have to see where things lead to with those two. Um, uh, I can tell you right now that they're not going to have a match at Clash of Champions. Um, like I said uh, last week, the only there's only one non-title matchup happening at Clash of Champions. And I don't want to reveal what it is yet because it's going to spoil some things. Um, but uh, yeah, there's only one non-title match happening. So it's all the championships on the line and then one non-title match happening and then everything else will be promo-wise. So Vader and Paige will eventually probably have a one-on-one matchup against each other, but it'll be some point beyond uh, this Thursday. After that... We have a 99-rated segment. Very, very hot-rated segment there. Honestly, we have, like, here at this WCW save, we have, like, uh, just a good handful of people. Like, you know, normally when we say handful, it's like, you know, a, a couple. But this is, like a, like, a big handful of people who can just go out there and just kill it with promos at this point. So that's really helping us out. But Brian Pillman with a promo saying that he'll be in action this week on WCW Saturday night, not revealing who his opponent's going to be. Uh, spoiler alert, since you're not going to see Saturday night, it's basically going to be a squash. Um, there'll be somebody who's kind of an unimportant, like, lower tier character, or uh, wrestler, that is. Um, but he will be at ringside to watch Bret Hart versus Cactus Jack this Thursday at Clash of Champions. After all, he's got to keep hit an eye on his eventual victim for when he becomes the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. So, keeping, every, keeping it uh, clear that he's targeting the World Champion and that he wants to keep Whoever holds that championship on their toes at any given time, because, I mean, he has until November of this year to cash that in. And uh, I got to imagine that the way he is as a character, uh, unlike Bam Bam last year, who said ahead of time that he was cashing it in because Bam Bam had no worries about, like, you know, whatever. Uh, Brian Pillman could, would easily, not could, but would easily wait and cash it and like cash it in either the same night or even just a week before just to throw people just to throw somebody off whoever has a championship at that time so gotta imagine that uh somebody who's tr who's uh kind of really trained up here in wcw by the dirtiest player in the game would do something dirty like that so you never know you never know um he may uh he may decide to call out the the winner of that match Thursday night for a match the following Monday on Nitro. Who the hell knows? We'll have to see how that plays out. Then we get a pre-match promo before the main event with the tag team titles on the line. Cactus Jack and Randy Savage are being interviewed by Gene Orkelin, who I forgot to put in the segment. Whoops. <laughs> um, Savage says that he has a lot of anger directed towards Bret Hart and the New World Order right now after what happened at Starcade, but that he knows that going in guns blazing can be dangerous. So he'll unleash the madness in the ring uh, here momentarily. And this Thursday, Cactus will take that championship away from Bret Hart. Cactus says that Savage will be the first to get a shot at the title when he does, but for now they have an opportunity to cripple the so-called plan of the New World Order by taking the WCW World Tag Team titles from the group here tonight. And then in 72 hours, they further cripple the group when Cactus Jack becomes the new WCW World Heavyweight Champion. That main event... For the tag team titles. It's a 93 rating. Holy cow. I knew it was going to be good. But I didn't expect a 93. Good lord. About that had great heat, great wrestling and good heat. Cactus Jack and Randy Savage defeat the New World Order in 1351. However, it is by disqualification when Paul Levesque runs in and attacks Cactus Jack. So the championships stay with the New World Order. A 93 rated matchup. 93 from Cactus, 89 from Savage, 72 from Waltman, 67 from Jerry Lynn, 
my god, that's a <laughs> that's crazy. I was when I booked this match, I was expecting mid eighties at best, but I mean, first off, look at all those bonuses. Um, but yeah, I wasn't expecting a 93 rating. That's, um, that's freaking amazing right there. I'm excited for that. Um, but as you saw, Paul Levesque ran in and he attacked Cactus Jack to keep the championships with the New World Order. Afterwards, Cactus and Savage try to fight off the New World Order, but when Bret Hart comes down to join, the, number games gets, the numbers game gets the best of them. That is until Steve Austin comes sprinting out from the back. He's still bandaged up after the attack at Starcade, but he is clearly pissed off, gunning straight for Paul Levesque, taking him down to the canvas with the Luthez press and punching away on him like crazy. Hart, Waltman, and Lynn get distracted enough by this for Savage and Cactus Jack to fight back. Savage then sends Waltman and Lynn to the outside, while Cactus catches Bret Hart with a pile driver in the middle of the ring. Cactus then grabs the WCW World Heavyweight Championship and raises it up in the air as the commentators hype up this Thursday's show. 88 rating for the final segment before that show. Very hot stuff there. Steve Austin making the big return. Um, obviously, he was only away for a couple weeks, but it's still you know significant because you know nobody we didn't really uh, hear a lot over. So it's making the big return here and looks like he's got. He's uh, going to be back up for Cactus and uh, at the sh at uh, Clash of Champions because, of course, he's not in a matchup. Um, Paul Levesque is defending the U.S. title against Dustin Rhodes, and he's not in that match. So Steve Austin doesn't have anything else better to do, so he's going to be at ringside for the Cactus-Bret Hart match. So we'll have to see how that ends up playing out. Our Nitro gets a 95 rating. For the first time in this series, not only is it a 95 rating, but for the first time in this series, we get the restriction for the British region that has growth restriction there as well. Very, very good stuff right now. This was an incredible show from top to bottom. Um, I, just absolutely killing it. Absolutely killing it. You see all of those blue um, numbers right there. Very, very hot stuff. And, uh, Good stuff there. So, we have the last little bit of hype there before this Thursday's Clash of Champions show. Um, this Thursday, it will be all sorts of crazy stuff happening. And then something happens. I, I it, to be fair, I was expecting it, but then something happens that just kind of throws a wrench in everything. <sighs> we'll go over everything else, and I'll I'll show you guys this because I don't want to. I'm not gonna bring it up like that and then tease you with it, but I'll have to figure out what I'm gonna do about it. Um, I know what I could do about it, but I'll have to figure it out. Nevertheless, Nitro obviously gets the big viewership victory once again, but it's not as big as it was because apparently Raw got themselves a better deal or something because they all of a sudden jumped up in viewers. We had 6.375 million viewers they had 3.4 they suddenly jumped up like doubled at least doubled what they normally get so they must have signed a new deal with somebody here that jumped them up um i mean usa again Network got them like 2 million viewers by itself so i don't know maybe it was just a big jump for them period but they got a big jump so all of a sudden they're they're coming at us Shawn michaels and warrior teamed up to defeat yokozuna and brian knobs in the main event so that's that's a thing um, <laughs> that is a thing, but, uh, yeah, so big victory for WCW yet again, absolutely killing it in the ratings. Um, 
And then, you know, you see you see the, the mail here, which I don't want to open up. Well, I guess I could... Uh, give me a second here. I want to... Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll reveal it. So, right now, Booker T's currently... His, uh, his contract came up, and so WWF is currently trying to fight with us for him. So, we're in the middle of that. Um, more than likely, we're going to end up winning that and keeping him around. Um, WWF keeps entertaining a deal for him but it's not like all i have to do is just slightly increase it and it he usually comes right back to us so i'm not too worried about that uh dustin rhodes thinks that rikishi fatu is charismatic he had a pre-show match that's why he's talked about there gino Kerlin doesn't think that lance Storm connects with the fans so you know there's that i guess um but yeah 7.95 tv rating for nitro but the problem is, is that uh, that other yellow thing down there that you see, the, the other highlighted yellow thing. God damn it. <laughs> Sean Waltman has been identified as a hard drug user. And uh... now, as you've seen, uh, most of the time, like pretty much every time when I have had these pop up i've been sending them to rehab because i want them to get first off i want them to get better right away secondly i know it it if i don't send them to rehab and they don't become rehabilitated then it can screw up their match ratings um it can throw things off for them um you know if they come they can either show up high as hell and they get sent home so that throws them off for the rest of that show or um they can have their in-ring performances affected by it, and that would throw everything off over. But at the same time, it's Sean Waldman. Like, he's one half of the WCW World Tag Team Champions right now. He's a member of the New World Order right now. I can't exactly just get rid of him to rehab. So I've got to figure out what I'm going to do about that. Um, I should probably... Uh, especially since he has... Uh, I mean, he has a planned match for this Thursday, but it's not uh, its not one that he's going to be, like, it's not, like, it'd be a big deal if he gets, if he misses it, but at the same time, the minimum time he would be away f to rehab is three months, and that would be a lot of time to be missing. Um, that would be either me having to bring somebody else into the New World Order as a temporary replacement, which would throw off plans for it, the group, or it would be me having to have them drop the championships, which also would throw a wrench in the plan for the group. So uh, I'll have to figure out what I'm, what I'm going to do about that. Um, I'll have to f decide what I want to do about that. Um, Cause obviously, especially if I'm going to keep using him as time comes on, I'd obviously want him to go to rehab. So he doesn't, have any future issues for me but at the same time short-term versus long-term goal uh, plans is exact is essentially what it comes down to um so with all that being said let me run down the show really quick uh the sh upcoming show that is for clash of champions which will be coming out this thursday uh you will get that episode this thursday night so you'll definitely want to keep an eye out for that one uh, for the WCW World Television Championship, it will be Dean Malenko defending against Meng. For the WCW World Women's World Championship, it will be Megumi Kudo defending against Bull Nakano. For the WCW World Tag Team Championships, thanks to a victory they got last week on WCW Saturday Night, it will be the New World Orders, Jerry Lynn and Shaw Wallman, or at least for now. That group, those two, uh, defending the titles against the Outlaws, uh, Brett Smith and William Wesson, who were able to get a victory over the Rock and Roll Express on Saturday night, and uh, that kind of got them a shot at the titles this coming Thursday on Clash of Champions. United States Championship is on the line as Dustin Rhodes challenges for the championship he just recently lost against the NWO's Paul Levesque, and of course the WCW World Title is on the line as um, Bret Hart defends the championship against Cactus Jack. As for the other match that I was referring to, 
um, I said it was going to be um, a non, I said it was going to be one non-title matchup happening at that show. It is revealed that um, it has been revealed by uh, however you want to reveal it that this Thursday on Clash of Champions, it will be a special T match. Uh, I did say that Paige and Vader were not having a one-on-one match anytime recently, um, but they are going to be in action this Thursday at Clash of Champions because it will be a big, big, at least in my opinion, a big six-man tag team matchup happening at Clash of Champions as it will be uh, Johnny B. Bad, Diamond Dallas Page, and Sting teaming up to take on Al Snow, Vader, and the Giants. That should be a huge matchup for sure. Um, I know Johnny B. Bad and Al Snow is kind of a weird um, couple of people to be thrown into that, but Johnny B. Bad is still kind of on that cusp of like up of like higher mid Carter t- talent. Like he's not quite in the upper mid Carter talent, but he's still kind of there. And Al Snow, as you saw with that in ring performance tonight, is someone who I should be pushing a little bit better. Um, seeing as how he had a 61 in ring performance tonight. So uh those that's going to be our big uh our big non-title matchup happening at Clash of Champions on top of everything, you know, on top of any other segments and everything else that might be happening. So we'll have to see how all that plays out. But thank you for watching. I definitely appreciate the support you have for the series. And uh well you'll find out in the Clash of Champions video whether Waltman's been sent to rehab or not, and what other plans I might have for him. Otherwise, I thank you all, and we will see you Thursday night.